This episode was made possible by our patron, Master Knight DH, our lovely backers on Patreon, and viewers like you. Thank you. The Difficulty Spike, often one of the greatest death knells for video game criticism. Nobody enjoys just cruising along in their game when suddenly, wham! An overwhelming obstacle that's so much harder than everything that's come before. While some games can use these toward the end to provide a strong, final challenge, and others can be seen as a sort of rite of passage to clear by needing to take a game more seriously and explore its deeper mechanics, the point where it gets tough is gonna be where new players will most commonly bounce off of a title. While you can just make a game start difficult and go up from there, or otherwise rise in difficulty quickly, that solution becomes less of a possibility the more complex your game is. More intricacies means more time the player has to learn those, and the less comfortable they're going to be when the going gets tough. Creating a proper escalation from the tutorial to the part where the game gets serious is an art. And surprisingly, a cute little GameCube game has quite the piece to display. Battalion Wars Titans of Tundra cranks up the heat not only in providing a far more challenging level than those surrounding it, but one that encourages the player to both play with and dominate the challenge it provides. Battalion Wars is a somewhat obscure spin-off from the Famicom... Advance... Nintendo... The Wars series, allowing the player to act as one of their units on the field in a third-person action game rather than as an all-seeing commanding officer. The controls take some getting used to, being a balance so precarious between real-time strategy and third-person shooter that there's not enough buttons or sticks left on the GameCube pad for camera control, but it's able to establish a fairly over-the-top and cartoony tone, making for the most charming little game about global politics and military glorification. However, this does make for a very involved process, using most of the face buttons and the right stick to direct troops, de-escalate troops, select specific troop groups, and change your player character's control to another type of troop. And considering each unit type stacks up differently against other unit types, and just bunching them all together is a surefire way to get all but one group of unit killed in a majority of situations, yeah, the game takes more than a few missions to get the player comfortable with the controls. The preceding mission, Plan of Attack, does a good job setting the stage here, forcing the player to use their flame veterans to torch infantry and bazooka enemies so they can clear out a way for their powerful but bazooka-weak tanks to finish the job. But it's not until the Titans of Tundra roll in that the player's skills are really tested. The player is given, by and large, the most powerful force they've ever had access to. Four tanks, six infantrymen, five bazooka vets, three flame vets, five brand spanking new missile vets, and one kinda useless scouting vehicle. This is a force the likes of which the player has never commanded before. Facing this force is Marshal Nova's Iron Eight. Eight heavy tanks with the durability and firepower to blow away any of the player's light tanks in a 1v1 scenario. Fortunately, Nova's tanks are spread out in defensive fortifications, letting the player's bazooka vets and tanks gang up on the heavy boys and take them out. That is, they would if Nova didn't plan for this and studied type matchups. Every heavy tank is guarded by an advanced group of a few bazooka veterans, which will blow the player's light tanks to kingdom come if they charge forward. Considering these light tanks are the player's best answer for the heavies, since they both recover from the gas canisters the heavy tanks drop without needing to share med pack resources with the infantry, and aren't as weak as the bazooka vets to splash damage, the player that blindly charges in will get their MVPs scrapped in seconds. Thus, the player is given a compelling challenge. Send in the infantry and flame vets to clear out everything that'd stop your tanks or bazooka vets from coming in, avoid aggroing the big boy, and then bring in the cavalry to clean up. 
rinse and repeat eight times, picking up med packs to heal your foot soldiers as needed, and treat this like an expanded tutorial. Mayday, mayday! We're going down hard! Enemy aircraft! I'm hit! yippee ki -yay! Is that how it goes? Well, that would be the case, but Nova's plan for that too. Gunships patrol the skies around the Iron 8, which can mow down tank and infantry alike from a safe distance, taking little damage. The brand new missile veterans are a player's only answer to these, but the gunship's patrol routes are slow and wide, meaning that a player will have to wait for their chance to take them out. Additionally, the gunships usually swing between the enemy's tank line and their infantry line, meaning that you'll have to wipe out the enemy in a hurry, then send the missile boys in to deal with the chopper, then retreat and hope you didn't overextend to get the tank to come in, all in real time. Missile vets are horribly inaccurate against grounded foes, and have all the weaknesses of being squishy humans going up against machine guns and explosives. Losing them in an initial charge to a gunship will all but ensure a player's defeat. It's an almost overwhelming need for constant positioning management and keeping the opponent from capitalizing on your weaknesses before you can do the same to them. But there is one element that keeps the battle winnable. You. As the player has direct control of any unit they'd like and can swap over to any other unit with a little real-time menu management, the player can take to the battlefield with a finesse not possible in the previous purely number-based Wars games. Not only does the player have significantly better control and aim than the AI, but the computer will try to target the player's unit if possible, as they're far more of a threat than the player's AI squad. This isn't a foolproof plan. If you leave your missile vets in front of the enemy firing squad, there's still going to be Swiss cheese in seconds, no matter what you do. But it allows the player a direct hand in the action, taking on helicopters, riflemen, even tanks, personally leading the charge on every front. It may be a long battle. It may get really bloody when charging the most fortified area where two heavy tanks lie in wait, but the player shall overcome this trial. You will make General John Madden proud. And even then, Battalion Wars asks more from the player, to become just a bit better to reap their ultimate rewards. Battalion Wars grades the player after each mission on speed, power, and technique, rewarding a player with a percentage-based score for finishing missions swiftly, overwhelmingly, and cleanly. You could take your time, carefully dancing around gunship patrols and methodically taking out infantry encampments until only the tanks are left, but your speed score is gonna bottom out at that rate. If these scores were merely traditional high scores, this wouldn't matter too much, but beating Titans of Tundra reveals a bonus mission. In order to access it, the player needs to have an average score of 85% or above across all of the game's missions in the Tundran territories. If your Titans of Tundra score is tanking that average, glorious additional content is going to be just out of reach. So, after the most difficult test the players face thus far, the game encourages them to try it again, and not only pass the test, but excel in it. Movement gets smoothed out, managing your battalion becomes easier, enemy habits become second nature, even luring out the tanks and ambushing them becomes possible. And your reward for your perfection? The ability to command the Iron 8 in a unique bonus map, crushing the forces you've just been using with overwhelming firepower by holding the line against their advance. Nice. Forcing players to meet a rising bar will always be tricky business. Raise it too slowly and you've got... well, modern Pokémon. Raise it too quickly and you alienate players who will bounce off of it. Add in new features and complexities for players to understand and you risk making them even more lost. But sometimes, it pays to be bold. Battalion Wars emphasizes this so well presenting a challenge that is insurmountable on paper, but becomes so much simpler when a player just tries. 
failure is so immediate in Titans of Tundra that a player's mistakes are well known to them, and success is so swift and powerful that it's rewarding for a player to learn from those same mistakes. Nothing is a better motivator to a player than the feeling of success. And if you let them learn how to be successful on their own, placing a puzzle in front of them and letting them blow it to pieces after examining it for long enough, then you're teaching them perfectly. And in teaching how to overcome the Titans of Tundra, Battalion Wars surely knows how to design for Escalation. <laughs>